What's up YouTube, I'm just another guy and welcome back to my rise to fame. So here we are with FC Lati, having just won our first ever cup here. We are 11 games into the league season and um, yeah, you know, we're aiming for, you no, know, we're aiming for the very top this year, this time around. So, you know, it's going to give us a really good indication of where we can finish these first 11 games. Is there anything like the last two thirds of last season and the cup run we had at the start of this year, then, you know, all, all signs are good so far. So, yeah, um, one thing I quickly want to point out is my coaching stats, they, they're looking nice. You know, they're growing. Definitely going to coaching badges has helped. I uh, can't currently get another coaching badge. I have asked, but uh, they're currently not um, not too interested in giving it to me. Um, but, yeah, you know, one thing I want to mention quickly before we go into Esulati is we're going to talk about Tonga uh, because I have actually played another game. Uh, we played uh, Sek. Sekeles, I'm not really sure to pronounce that country, uh, but we lost 3-2 to them in a friendly in preparations for the OFC Cup. Uh, as you can see, it was a game where we were completely dominated, but these guys are one of the more stronger teams from um, this continent, or definitely a stronger team that we can actually play. And in fact, look at that, they've actually got a guy who plays for Genoa. So... You know they've they've definitely got some quality in them, and like I say, they're definitely one of the one of the bigger boys. I, I believe they're one of the bigger boys anyway from our from our um, from our continent. You know the 172nd or whatever it was. You know better than Samoa. You know actually probably better than all the teams that are going to be currently playing in the first round of the cup. They are so you know it, it was the reason I I gave us that friendly is because we are preparing for the OFC Nations Cup, which is the Oceanas Cup. Uh, there was the first round, then it goes into a second round. And um, basically, yeah, I, I really want to test myself against the very best, which is why, you know, we've played Tahiti and we've played these guys. And we've lost 3-2 on both occasions, but, you know, in a game that we were both completely dominated in, we've managed to score. So, I encouraging signs, you know, and I'm, I'm optimistic going into this OFC Nations Cup, which I'm not going to be uh, showing you. I mean, if we can get to a final or something of these... Um, while I'm here at Tonga, then of course it will be live commed. But yeah, I'm not gonna go through. The, I'm not gonna do the groups. But next time I meet you back, I should have everything like pretty much done and dusted with it. So yeah, fingers are crossed. But like I say, I'm optimistic. Uh, I'm not expecting too much, but I'm, there is a chance, which is you know what. As long as there's a chance, there's a way of getting it. You know, and that we have to find that way. So yeah, that's just a little bit about Tonga. You know, lost another game in charge. So let's go back to FC Lati. So competitions wise, we currently find ourselves top of the table. Having won eight games, drawn three, and lost a big fat zero. We have we are currently unstoppable right now. Yeah, that's the right word, yeah. <laughs> we are currently unstoppable, apart from the three draws, obviously, and stuff, but we'll ignore that stuff. Yeah, no one can beat us. We're unbeatable. That's the better word to use. Unbeatable right now. We are but so are NYPA, so it's we're having a very good start to the season, but so are the teams just below us, you know. NYPA are only two points off us, Hucker are only five points off us, so it's still very tight at the top of the table. Um but it you know, the fact that we are currently unbeaten and we're doing as well as we are, you know, scored one less goal than NYPA and conceded only three more goals than them. We're currently doing really well going forward and defending. And as well, if we go on the match stats here, you know, you can see most man of the match awards goes to our player, Gallon. Top goal scorers, two of our players are up there. Average rating, three of our players are in the top four. Most assists, two of our players are in the top four. We, you know, we are dominating this list right now. And there's something as well is quite interesting. Uh, John Allen, uh, a Welsh uh, guy who I believe has been in this league for a while. Yeah, it was just uh, he, he got a new job and I was like, maybe it's because of I'm doing so well. They were like, we need more British people. Then I realized, you know, where his history was and stuff. And I was like, oh, that's not actually true. <laughs> I was hoping I was going to have a more of an influence and they were going to input more British people to try and get the talents that I produced and stuff. But it's it's not that reason, though. Um, but yeah, it's been an incredible year so far. We have been unstoppable. You know, one title um, or one trophy Already secured for the season with only one defeat so far to HJK in the group two. Uh, we also have ourselves a cup semi-final later on in the season as we progress through from the Suomen Cup. So currently the treble is still very much a thing. You know, it's still very achievable. So let's start off. So to start off the um, league season after our 2-1 win against Jaro in the uh, Liga Cup, we won 4-0. Cole Stock um, got himself two goals and Jamie Allen in a very comfortable victory against VPS where we flexed our power yet again. 
um, in a year that we want to make our own. After that, we played IFK and we can and we lost three two. Conceding two goals was a little bit annoying. Um, definitely could have played better defensively, but going forward still looked very dangerous. Sissoblo got us underway in the 19th minute. Cole Stockton helped us get a 3-0 lead before half time, which was game over. But you know they got two goals back, and you always feel that when they get when a team gets two goals back against you, that momentum's with them. There's always that chance they can get the third. They didn't. And in the end, you know, that three goals we scored in the first half was enough to win us the game and get us three points. After that, we played a team in the division below, JBK, in the Sullivan Cup seventh round. We won 4 0, pretty easy game, you know, no real trouble there. 70% of the ball as well. We, we were just really dominating this match, but you should be against teams lower than you in the division. So, following that, we played KUPS and we drew our first game and dropped our first points. Um, of the league season in a nil-nil draw. This game was very frustrating because it was a game we should have won. I mean, when a team you're playing against gets zero shots on target, you know you've wasted an opportunity to win the game. And that's what we can say today. It was a bad performance going forward. David Ammo was, wasn't was good. Uh, Cole Stockton could have done better. And not only that, Cameron Borthwick-Jackson as well picked up an injury, which, um, has, which has kept him out for a long time. You know, he's still out for another two months. He tore his hamstring. Isn't that tearing your hamstrings? You know, if you do that one, two times in your career, that can really mess with your stats and really end the career, actually. You know, I um, if those of you have watched my Abba Wiswith save from last year, you'll know that I, about, I think it was maybe seven or eight seasons in. It was around the time, uh, basically, I don't know how many seasons it was in, but Christian, uh, not Christian Bale, sorry, Gareth Bale, I don't know what, where that came from. Uh, Gareth Bale, at the age of 31 or so, pretty much had no career. He wasn't playing for Madrid. He went alone to Hertha Berlin and wasn't playing. And the reason for that was because he kept on picking up these sustained injuries, you know, like hamstring injuries and stuff like that. Because they do a number on your speed. And as a player, if your speed goes and you, in, you know, a quality of player we have as well, you know, once your speed starts going, you haven't really got much else to really do it, you know, to cover yourself with. You know, you haven't really got the mental knowledge, especially in defense, to really cover for a lack of speed. So hopefully that won't do affect Borthwick Jackson too much. But like I said, it kept him out for a long time. And Borthwick Jackson was our main centre-back last year. He was our leading guy. So I was sort of worried after that match that we would struggle a little bit defensively. And we did concede two goals afterwards. But his replacement, Bruno Wilson, ended up getting himself on the score sheet in, uh, in the process. So, you know, it wasn't all doom and gloom there. In a 4-2 victory, uh, you know, we did have ourselves a 2-1 lead in the 33rd minute. And then, you know, we had a 3-2 lead come the 65th minute. And then we secured our two-goal deficit yet again. So, or surplus yet again. So, uh, you know, it was, and again, another easy game. It was a great performance all round. Uh, Le Bongen, or whatever that guy's name is in the centre defence in mid role. He didn't have a good game, which is probably why they scored as many goals as they did. He was definitely at fault for the second goal. So that's why he ended up coming off the pitch. But, uh, you know, it was still a really good game and another really comfortable and dominant performance from us. Uh, then we played HJK at home, looking to get a revenge on a home defeat earlier on in the season. And we, at, we, we beat them yet again. We didn't smash them this time. It wasn't like the 4-0 win earlier on in the year. But we beat them. And that was the most important thing. And, you know, they took the lead. And come the half time, it was 2-1 um, to them. So we, we were fighting back. But once they got that man sent off in the 46th minute, just after the start of the second half, he got himself his second uh, second yellow heart, yellow card. And um, I said first half a second ago, didn't I? It should be second half, I think. Whatever. <laughs> but yeah, once he got himself that second yellow card, it was our game for the taking. And Matai Gallen turned on the style and scored two goals in 10 minutes or nine minutes, really, and it helped us win the game. Cole Stockton didn't have a great match, but Matai Gallen stepped it up in a really good game. And also, Samuel Bastian scored a goal as well. Scored the, um, a goal as well. I think that was, was that his first goal of the season or first goal for the club? It was his first league goal. And um, yeah, that was his first goal for the club as well. So, Samuel Bastian, the 22 year old um, Congan. Uh, Congan? Is that someone you call someone from Conga? Whatever, sir. Did you have a. Yeah, 22-year-old getting his first, you know, currently his only goal for the club. So, you know, that was nice to see him get on the score sheet in a really big game. You know, one of the biggest tests we're going to have, uh, or, you know, at the time. Or even, yeah, it's going to be the biggest test because it's our rival game and it means so much more is on the line. Following that game, we won 5-1 and Gallon yet again steps it up, scoring four goals in this game. And Carl Stockton as well, getting involved in the scoring in another really comfortable performance. SJK got a goal and their only shot on target, which is a little annoying. I would have loved to have kept a clean sheet. But a way of looking at it is I don't have to play, uh, don't, I don't have to pay clean sheet bonuses. So it's not the worst thing, losing 5-1. Yeah, still pretty good defensive performance. 
Then Jaro won 3 0. And I think it was the first time we've played Jaro, isn't it, since the Cup? Um, yeah, since the Cup final. So obviously they were going to look to try and get a little bit of revenge or try and at least redeem themselves from the Cup final. And they weren't able to. A 3 0 victory. They got themselves a man sent off as well. Um, but the game was already done and dusted by the time that man had been sent off. I think maybe that was just frustration coming through. You know, none of them were playing particularly well. Uh, they couldn't really get control of the game. Uh, their chances, they were squandering them. So as a result, I think, like I said, the frustration came out in the end with a bloke getting sent off with a straight red. And it was a really good performance. Look at that, Kazim Abdullah getting himself a man of the match performance in a game that we won 3-0. I think it shows how good his defensive and attacking performance was in the match. So... Uh, after that, um, where are we, Jairo? So after that, we played in the Swimming Cup quarterfinal, and this time we played ROPS. Yet again, another team from the division below. Surprised these teams from the division below are going as far as they are in the competition. But they put up a, a sterner test than most teams do, and we actually came up against our ex-player, Laurie Dalet Valley. And, um, yeah, he had an ideal return against the team, scoring in their first minute. And I was like, oh, no, we're going to lose. It's going to be one of them games where he's going to have a, a, just an unstoppable performance. <laughs> you know, it's going to just tear us apart. But no, it didn't plan out that way. But it didn't get any better for us initially. 19 minutes, they scored yet again. So at halftime, or just before, you know, look, approaching halftime, we found ourselves 2-0 down. We did, thankfully, get a, a penalty in the... F um, 47th minute, I was trying to add up in my head while talking, 47th minute with Tishobla converted, so just before halftime, and it meant going into halftime, it was 2-1, and it wasn't as bad, it means, it meant, you know, the team talk was a little bit different than originally planned, and then once we came out in the second half, and some, uh, Samuel Bastian got himself a 48th minute equaliser for us, I knew we were going to go on and win the game, it took us a little while, but um, in the 75th minute, Arthur Worry from a corner, got us the winner, and put us through to that semi-final. So, looking pretty good in the Solomon Cup. Like I say, strangely, the team from the lower division putting in arguably the best challenge against us so far this season. So, um, and the league season, oh, since the league season started anyway. So, good on them. But, obviously, they couldn't, obviously, they didn't stop us overall. So, we've got that cup final, like I said, to look forward to. And against Lives as well, a team from the lower division who just were relegated last year. So, um... Hopefully, that's a cup final pretty much secured. Then, after that cup uh, game, we won 3-1 against TPS. Arthur Worry got himself two goals into Solis coming on. I think starting his first game this season, was it? Or first league game? I oh, know he's played eight times. Oh, he started eight times. I thought it was his first start. I don't know why. Um, but his first goal for us anyway for a little while. So that was good in a nice, comfortable performance. Then we played MYPA and we drew 1-1. But this is a 1-1 I'd take. You know, they're just below us in the league. Uh, you know, they're, they're the team in second, and I sort of approach this in the Mourinho way, you know, in Jose Mourinho for Chelsea, he looks at the teams, he looks at the games against like City, Arsenal, Man U, um, Liverpool to some extent, Tottenham as well. And Southampton even, you know, he looks at these games against tough teams who are around the top of the table and thinks, look, as long as I don't lose points to them, it's a good outcome. And that's my mentality here. So, you know, obviously I would have loved to have won the game. And I wanted to win the game. You know, it's great to extend the gap out. But when you're playing teams like NYPA, you want to do all you can to make sure they don't gain points on you. So, okay, it was a draw. You know, and okay, we didn't extend the gap out. But at least we didn't give them the opportunity to gain points on us. Now, the only way for them to gain points on us is if we, let us, if we drop points elsewhere. And based on our form so far, that's looking highly unlikely. So... You know, it. this is a good result. Like I said, no matter, even in the end, you know, it was 1-1 and we did score an own goal. I say an own goal. It came off the crossbar post, I believe it was, and bounced back in off our goalkeeper. So it was an unlucky own goal. But yeah, you know, even despite that, and we got ourselves the equaliser, um, you know, it would, it, whatever, you know, it was still a really good result. And I was happy with the point. Especially away from home as well, you know, that's, that is actually a really good point to take away. 4-1 after that to Honka. Cole Stockton got himself two more goals. Matai Gallen and Jordan LeBron getting themselves on the score sheet. It was, again, another really comfortable performance. A little disappointed with the clean sheet. Uh, not to keep the clean sheet, but again, I'm not paying clean, clean sheet bonuses. And as a club with not much money, that's, uh, that's, that's fine. And then very recently, we let ourselves down a little bit, drawing 1-1 to FC Haka. Uh, again, this was a, this is a point I'm not happy with. You know, we should have done better here. Uh, to go 1-0 down as well was a little bit of frustrating because really the game was, was under control from the get-go and uh, we shouldn't have 
ever allowed them to get the lead. Uh, but at least we got one back. It was for a, a penalty, so it wasn't exactly the most comfortable game for us in terms of going forward. And that's what let us down. You know, it's like a pretty fortunate, or not fortunate penalty, but a deserved penalty um, helped us get a result that we did deserve. So, like I say, it's been an incredible year so far. One defeat throughout, enti uh, throughout our entire league season. We're undefeated in the league now since the end of last year. Look at that, since the 13th of August. We are now undefeated and we are approaching, the, you know, we just entered June. So it's been a brilliant year for the club. And like I say, the treble is still very much on. The Europa League will be starting soon as well for us. It's starting in July. So uh, next time I'll meet you back, I will have some uh, European football to go through, I believe. Which is, uh, you know, which is all good, which is nice to, to have. Uh, finances wise, as you can see, we're really struggling financially. Um... We do, we do need to sort that one out, uh, but I don't particularly know how. I mean, like I said, the only I, I could shrink the wage bill down, but I don't know. We'll have to see. Obviously, we're looking on course to win the league this year, uh, and it's just about you know going forward. In fact, uh, was uh, Arthur were injured in the last match? He was, wasn't he? Yeah, no, he wasn't in the last match. When, when was he injured? Sorry, in this game against FC Hocker, I didn't actually talk about it. Arthur Worry was injured, and Arthur Worry, uh, as well as Borthwick Jackson, are both out for long times now. As you can see, Arthur Worry out for three months, which means both of our key centre-backs who played in pretty much every game last season and have played in pretty much every game this season that they've both been available in are both out injured, which means William Lid Lid um, Lindquivixt, I'm not sure how to pronounce this guy's name, 21-year-old who's been at this club pretty much all his career, having moved here from a very young age. He's now being thrusted into the starting lineup. I mean, he's played a bit part here this year and last year, but he's never really been a starting player, so... He'll, he's coming in and also Bruno Wilson our new signing this year he's coming in to start but these performances so far in place of Borthwick Jackson have been up to the standard I would require for a centre-back so that's you know I'm happy with Bruno Wilson but yeah both of our centre-backs are currently out injured so uh, we're going to be entering an awkward stage plus Kazim Abdullah as well is out injured which means uh, Conor McLaughlin comes in which means out of our best starting four uh, starting back four only one is fit so we could be entering a bit of a dodgy stage of form. Hopefully it won't affect us too much, but you never really know. You know, there's always that chance that, you know, they're completely, they could completely cock it up. But, you know, fingers crossed they don't do that. I mean, the game against FC Harker, we did have the two centre-backs starting their first games together. And they, they, they didn't look too bad. So, you know, things should be good. Things should still be good. All right, let's, uh, let's wrap this up by looking at the awards. And then I will, yeah, I'll end it. And I will meet you back sometime in the future. So, um, not team of the season. Manager of the month. Manager of the month, we picked it up once uh, in May. Hopefully, we'll pick it up in June with a good run of form. Um, player of the month has gone to Cole Stockton in April and Matai Gallen in May. So, uh, doing really well there for the uh, awards. Premier League. Where? What else could I do? Goal of the month. We have uh, not won it. We've come third twice, though. I don't really care about Manchester. Uh, about, about goal of the month, though. It doesn't really. It's not really worthwhile award. You know, player of the month means he's the best player. That's a nice award to get. Manager of the month, nice award to get. Goal of the month. Oh yeah, you scored the best goal. Who cares? You can get a bit of pot luck and score best goal. <laughs> look at that goal. Goals per minute. That's a great record to have. Cole Stockton. And look at that as well. Charlie Taylor and Matai Gallen run the most dis have the highest distance covered in the league. And um, they both play on our left-hand side. So clearly the left-hand side of our pitch are just full of workers. <laughs> who just continuously want to just run and run and run. Which is a really nice attribute to have for a team. No, it's really good to see that. But yeah, I don't... I, uh, actually, one more thing I can go over quickly to, before I end this. Transfer history. Uh, we haven't brought anyone more new in since I last saw you, but we've led a, or a few transfers have been confirmed and officially gone through. So, Geller left the club finally to join IFK in January. Um, which, actually, no, I, he would have been gone before when I last saw you, wouldn't he? Yeah, you know, yeah, in a cup final. I think I went through it in a cup final. I can't quite remember. See, actually, you've seen every transfer um, since when I last saw you, since I last saw you. So, yeah, no, it's it, it, it's all been gone through. So, yeah, um, yeah, there's nothing more I can actually go through it while I'm here. So, uh, that's, uh, you know, next time I meet you back will be 11 games into 
11 more games into the league season, which should get us somewhere around here. So it might be after the cup final. I might, you know, if it's around this stage, which I think it is, uh, then I might do the cup for uh, semi final as well. So we can have an official cup final stamped in and, you know, the, a, a, the league pretty much in our hands and stuff also as well by the next time i'll meet you back which is like i said around august time and stuff europa league would have would have kicked off but we'd also be uh, we would also know the fate of our time at tunga a uh, tonga sorry tunga i don't know where tunga come from but tonga um yeah you know the um, oceana cup would have been finished and the pacific games would have been finished or so um you know we'll know where we're going with tonga if we get to a cup final which i think is highly unlikely uh maybe even a semi-final i'm not too sure but if we get to a final whatever then obviously i'll, I'll live comment but you know with tonga is that really gonna happen i mean i don't know but yeah either way guys until next time whenever that may be peace out